voit TCBS. EVS operation consists in using the EVS system to see better than in natural vision. It's a combination of cockpit vision and published instrument approach procedure. From an operational standpoint, EVS allows the pilot to operate beyond minima and adds credit to most of 3D instrument approaches such as LPV. Although EVS is an onboard solution, it's a low-vis operation, and as such, the aerodrome needs to be suitable for that use. AL2 was based on an effective coordination between the NSP, the airport operator, and the National Aviation Authority to declare Anverb and Le Bourget as the first aerodrome suitable for the EVS operation. EFVS is a key enabler. It's a major step forward to improve the accessibility of airports in degraded weather, especially for regional aerodromes like Antwerp Airport. Radiation fog is the most common type of fog we experience here in Antwerp. In Antwerp, we experience between 50 and 20 days a year an intense fog, usually early in the morning, causing delays and diversions. A few crucial and critical things need to be checked beforehand. Skies developed low visibility procedures. We also did a mandatory Ponsops obstacle assessment. All the checks and assessments were performed in accordance with the ongoing EASA rulemaking task on all weather operations. Uh, the experimental aerodrome approval process in this project showed that there is no need of any additional ground equipment. So here at Le Bourget, which is the first European business airport, we are surrounded by urban areas enclosed between the city of Paris and the Paris Charles de Gaulle airport. Due to this congested location, we do not have the possibility to install the ground equipment necessary to perform CAT 2 or 3 operation. Thanks to the EFVS, an approval down to 400 meters RVR has been granted for the Caesar demo flight with Dassault. RVR 2 450 meters. This optimization offered by the EFVS 2 line features will improve the success rate of landing and reduce the ATC workload of Paris Charles de Gaulle and Le Bourget during low visibility conditions by offering more efficient and safer operation. EFVS operational credit in use with the 3D approach has allowed us to land with RVR of 500 meters instead of the usual 750 meters required for operators without an EFVS. These demos not only confirmed the improved operational flexibility, but also the improved safety aspect. It would be nice to have that EFVS capability published on the charts at least the crew will know whether or not the airport can handle it. The European PBN regulation will support a dense network of 1,000 aerodromes in Europe before 2024. And thanks to EFVS, this dense network will unlock the capacity of secondary aerodromes under degraded weather conditions. Feedback collected from ATM players, including airport, will serve as recommendation for EASA rulemaking activities. Now we are already looking forward to the EASA regulation, the publication, that will allow us to upgrade our airport certificate and to assist other ANSPs and airports in implementing EFES operations. Skies has developed a getting started with EFES manual and we expect this new regulation to be published by 2022. The INSP, the airport operator, the aircraft manufacturer, the air user, the National Aviation Authority worked as a whole consortium in the perspective of large deployment of the EVS operation in Europe. These results would not have been possible without an organization like CISA with its unique very large demo framework.